While walking down the street, a heart doctor saw a patient that he had performed tests on the day before. And in light of the results of those tests, he was shocked by the way his patient was behaving. His patient was dressed as if for a party. He was, he was dancing around and hopping around and he was making a lot of noise. A shady looking woman who had obviously been drinking was hanging on one of his arms. And the doctor's dismay must have shown on his face because the man saw him and said, hey doc, what's the matter with you? And the doctor said, I can't believe the way you're behaving here. Why are you taking these chances? Why are you acting this way? And sort of puzzled, the man replied, what do you mean? I'm just doing like you told me yesterday, doc. You remember, get a hot mama, be cheerful. The doctor just exploded. I did not tell you that, he said. I told you, you got a heart murmur, be careful. You know, sometimes people just hear what they want to hear. You're watching an In Favor video series called Treasuring Your Words from Heaven, What to Do and What Not to Do with Your Prophetic Words. And we're walking you through 14 uh, steps, 14 ways to respond to your personal prophetic prophecy. So congratulations, first of all, on receiving a prophetic word, or 10, or 15, or 50. You were very careful, weren't you, to record that word and to transcribe it so that you have it in, in a permanent form and you know exactly what was said. And you are faithfully reviewing it. You're reading it over and again regularly, keeping it in front of you, reminding yourself what God has said to you. And if there were parts of it that you didn't understand, you've made every effort to ask questions of your word, to discern what it means, and to interpret it correctly. Now, this video sort of follows that train of thought, and it takes it one step further. And it's a big step. It's an important step because response number four here warns you, don't twist it. Don't twist it into something else. Don't twist it into something that you want it to say. You see, if you are discerning it, interpreting it correctly, then this probably won't be a problem. But sometimes our desires, our ambitions, our hopes, and our dreams can cause it to misinterpret the word, often with disastrous results. And I believe that this twisting, and I believe that deserves individual attention and separate treatment because it is such a common mistake, and it's so easily made, and it has such devastating consequences. Just as prophets sometimes face a temptation to say what people want to hear. So, those who hear the prophecies also face a temptation to hear what they want to hear, to make their own voice sound like the voice of God. So, here's just a few scriptural examples of twisting the words of God. The serpent distorted God's word in the garden, and Eve responded in disobedience and sin, as did the whole human race. Abraham and Sarah involved Hagar in their misinterpretation of God's promise and his will with disastrous results. Saul selectively disobeyed God's directives and he forfeited his throne. Peter even said Paul twisted, used that exact word. He said they twist Paul's writings to their own destruction. When we twist God's word, that's never a good outcome. Here's a present day example. This is Cindy Jacobs, and she's discussing uh, prophecies that are being misquoted and when parts of a prophecy are taken out of context. She says this, many people have received prophecies that were accurate, but these people have gotten into a lot of trouble through misinterpretation or misapplication of the prophetic words. One time, I was prophesying over a young couple at our home cell meeting. The couple had been struggling financially for quite some time. The prophecy said that God was going to give them a house if the husband would be diligent in his work and do his part, and if he would be obedient to God in every area of his life. Those were the conditions. I heard, she said, I heard through the grapevine later that this couple had bought a trailer on credit. Still later, I heard that the trailer had been repossessed and that the couple was mad at me and accusing me of being a false prophetess. Neither of them ever went out to get a job, however. They just expected the money to fall from heaven. 
they were in serious presumption and took the prophecy about the house totally out of context. Not once did they try to contact me to clarify the word. I unfortunately found out about the misinterpretation too late to be able to help them. She advises, be careful not to interpret the word in the light of your own wants and desires. I have had many singles come to me saying God has promised them certain mates because they were told so in prophecies. And when I asked them what the prophecy said, they came up with something like this. God said he would give me the desires of my heart, and -and so-and-so is the desire of my heart. She says, well, that may be the desire of their flesh, but God may not have anything to do with that at all. Now, me speaking, I've heard many instances where prophecies were misconstrued so that people said they heard God telling them that they could divorce their spouse. Or in one case, they heard God say that they should stay in an abusive relationship when they shouldn't have been in in the first place. And in fact, that particular instance, the one giving the word, sensing that this person wasn't really listening, wasn't really hearing, she, at the end she said, now, what did you hear me say? And when this person said that, she's just like the doctor at the beginning story. She said, I didn't say that. She just exploded. You know, it's almost intentional. We are so desperate to hear a particular specific word. And so that is what we hear, no matter what was actually said. We confuse our thoughts and our desires with God's voice and God's will. And I, I was going to give you several more examples, and, and I do so in the book, but some of these are unbelievable. Some of them are stomach-turning. Others are just heartbreaking. And this is the kind of stuff that ends up discrediting the gift of prophecy and grieving the Spirit and embarrassing the church and defaming the name of Christ. And it's completely avoidable. This doesn't have to happen. And it's not the fault of the Spirit, and it's not the fault of the prophecy. John Hark said this. Listen to this. This is gold. Being able to replay our words allows us to verify that what we heard the first time was, in fact, what was said. It prevents us from interpreting our prophetic word through the wrong lens. Many of us are in a place of desperation and hunger when we receive our words. We are standing in agreement and prayer about specific things, things like salvation of loved ones, the need for financial breakthrough, turmoil within the family, or a career change. If we aren't careful, he says, we can unconsciously interpret something we hear in the moment through the lens of our need rather than what God is actually saying. Don't get me wrong, he says. God cares deeply about your need, and he is working. But it doesn't mean that this word you've received applies to that situation. And if we twist it to apply to something it wasn't meant for, we can miss out on something that is vitally important and life-changing in its own way. Basically, we've wasted a prophetic word. So he says, I've worked with many people that come to me stating that a prophetic word had promised something only to listen back and realize that it was something completely different. Now, how can you make this response your own? As we walk through these 14 responses, you're going to hear over and over again in several different steps the importance of confirmation. If we're doing a good job of discerning the prophecy, interpreting it correctly, then you'd be looking for confirmation. You'd want to make sure. You'd be asking friends to weigh in on this. You'd welcome their prayers and their opinions. It will be pretty hard for you to find someone else who shares your twisted misinterpretation of a prophetic word. Things like, well, this is telling me I can quit my job, and God has given me permission to leave my marriage, or I'm going to make a major change in my life, and that may hurt some people, but that's just too bad because I've got to follow God. Are you the only one who sees it this way? Are you the only one that hears that? Are you the only one that understands it that way? then if so, think twice, think 10 times, think 100 times before acting on your misinterpretation of a legitimate prophetic word. Put your actions on hold until you've had time to think and pray and evaluate and seek counsel and find confirmation. Glad that's over.
Next video, perhaps the single most important response in the whole list, testing the word. God commands us to weigh and evaluate all prophecies and to hold on to the good.